Good morning and welcome to this morning's liturgy. Please stand and join in our opening hymn, number 735, Gather Us In, number 735. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning. morning, Certainly welcome to all as we gather for worship today. Today we hear great stories about forgiveness of God's extravagant and abundant mercy and love, so recognizing our need for that as we turn away again and again from, from God in our sin, we prepare for the sacred mysteries by acknowledging our sin, and we ask God for forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. Through, you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshiping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with such great power and with so strong a hand? Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. In all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in his punishment. He had threatened to inflict on his people. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy 
in appointing me to the ministry. I was once a blasphemer and a prosecutor and arrogant, but I have been mercifully treated because I acted out of ignorance in my unbelief. Indeed, the grace of our Lord has been abundant, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of these, I am the foremost. But for that reason, I was mercifully treated, so that in me, as the foremost, Christ Jesus might display all his patience as an example for those who would come to believe in him for everlasting life. To the king of ages, incorruptible, invisible, though only God, honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep, and losing one of them would not leave the 99 in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it. And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders with great joy. And upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having 10 coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, rejoice with me because I have found the coin that I lost. I, in just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Then he said, a man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here I am, dying from hunger. 
I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Let us celebrate with a feast because the son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours, but now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we hear incredible Bible stories about forgiveness and mercy, the gospel account commonly referred to as the prodigal son has inspired countless painters, Rembrandt and others to try to capture some image of this reconciliation and return and forgiveness. Think about composers, all different kind of music that tries to revolve around this um, theme of forgiveness and love and acceptance and, and, and different plays and dramatic presentations. The parables that Jesus presents to, in today's gospel inspired the people of his day and it has inspired people for thousands of years and even to our day. I think it somehow speaks to our very heart and soul. I find that people relate to this gospel in different ways, often depending on what's going on in their life. So literally, just a couple days ago this past week, um, out, outside in front of the garage here, I noticed the, the light kind of hanging there wasn't working. It has a sort of a glass globe on it, it had three little screws holding it in place. So I get up there and loosen those. I'm trying to get it loose enough so the glass, I can get it out, not drop it and shatter it. Um, and, and lo and behold, I turn one of them a little too far, and the screw drops onto the ground. You know, and I look for it, I hear it sort of bounce and hit what sounded like wood. So I get my flashlight out there, I'm looking and I'm looking and I can't find it. You know, and I think, oh great, you know, I'll go to the store and, and never in a million years will I find a screw that will fit. So then I'm thinking like, so will just two of them hold it up there in place? Or do I need to look at calling Al Cape and replacing that light? Or some electrician, you know? Um, so, so another time I get my light and I'm looking and I'm looking and clear over here I found it. And, and so I don't know that I um, invited everybody to come and celebrate with me and have, have a rejoicing, but certainly there was some sense of like, good, I can finish this project and get some light out here again. So again, I think we relate to the, these parables in, in different ways. You know, in, in, in the gospel, the, the parable of the prodigal son, I, I think any, um, you know, first of all, maybe our attention is drawn to the Father. I mean, I think about any parent, any coach, any teacher who's ever kind of struggled with somebody in their care. 
You know, it seems like they're just not kind of right on, on the right path. Maybe they're struggling in some way. You know, you're like that father. We can imagine like, like every day, probably every minute of the day, he's there sort of wondering like, where's my son? You know, is he alive? Is he well? Is he, you know, what kind of, what kind of condition is he in? You know, just kind of longing and praying and hoping that somehow he'll, he'll be okay. So I think anyone in, in charge or having some influence upon others probably feels like that at times. Or maybe at times we, we're, we're like that son, you know, that, that, gee, somehow we think we know and demand certain things or get in just to a bad way, you know, and it's like, you know, where do I turn? Here's this guy, I mean, he's longing to eat the pods that are fed to the pigs, you know, talk about being pretty desperate, you know, and so once again, maybe we perhaps not quite to that extent, but at times find ourselves in a difficult situation. And sometimes maybe we're like that elderly son, that one who seems to be like we're there doing the right thing. We're faithful in all of that, and we get overlooked. I mean, does anybody feel like that? You know, once again, maybe a, a kid, a player on a team that doesn't seem to get the recognition, or a son or a daughter. I mean, I know parents and grandparents aren't allowed to have favorites, you know, but sometimes you can feel that way, right? It's like, this isn't fair. I'm not being treated correctly. So I, I think we can relate to all of those. And, and in different ways, the, 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 the scripture passage is presented to us today. We have a God who loves us beyond what we can ever imagine. You would think that it would be natural and even easy for us to always celebrate God's love for us and to readily do what is pleasing to God. Yet we know as human beings, we constantly face temptations in this world and we at times turn away from God in our sin. All of the readings beyond this um, parable of, of the prodigal son, they speak to us about avenues of forgiveness. So I think there's different ways that that can be presented or perhaps be, be revealed in our lives. You know, the first reading we heard about Moses and his interceding for the Israelite people. So the Israelites, God has just done all these amazing things for them. You know, all the signs in Egypt, part of the Red Sea, they were able to get out of their slavery and, and be free to continue on their way worshiping the one true God. And, and, and we hear that Moses is taken away from them where he goes up the mountain to have this um, interaction with God. And so in, in this short kind of interim, what do we hear? The people, they build their molten calf. It's like, what's the first commandment? You shall not have strange gods before me. What are they doing? They're building this, crafting this thing with their own hands, thinking that somehow that can save them while they ignore the God who had done all these incredible things to lead them on the path of, 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 of worshiping the one true God. So, 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 so we see that. So, so, so Moses comes along and he intercedes. We hear about God's wrath flaring up and wanting to wipe them out and say, Moses, let's start over. We'll begin with a whole new, new tribe of people and, and then we won't have to worry about the stiff-necked people anymore. But we hear Moses, he intercedes. And so I think that also speaks to us about the importance of our prayer for one another. You know, maybe we see somebody who seems to be going down a wrong path. We just kind of stand, you know, stand by the, the side and say, gee, I hope they don't end up in prison or dead. You know, or, or can we somehow pray for them and intercede that somehow, you, you know, they, they, they might be drawn back to their senses. So sometimes that intercession can be so important as we try to be Christian and, and care for one another. In the second reading, we, uh, another avenue of forgiveness, we hear about from Paul in his letter to Timothy. Paul admits that he was a blasphemer and a persecutor of Christians and arrogant, but by God's grace, he has this conversion experience and becomes like the foremost apostle proclaiming Christ to the world. And so sometimes there can be those miracles, those miraculous interventions where somehow God will touch a person's mind and heart to get them um, to recognize their errors and, and put them on the path of, of, of goodness. And then finally in the gospel, so those are two. The third is in, in the gospel, we um, hear about the prodigal son, how he comes to his senses and develops a sort of a plan 
about how he returned to his father. And so for us, at times, maybe that's like our conscience, you know, that, or, or something from the scriptures or somehow that we're inspired to recognize, oh, I'm really not in a place where I'm honoring God. So what kind of plan with God's grace can I come up, up with to change, you know, to somehow um, pursue that, that life of holiness that God would want? These are always still in our day that we can be drawn back to God and make progress in a life of holiness. Allow me just to offer a, a couple more reflections on today's gospel. Again, I think it presents so many powerful messages for us. As the younger son demands his share of the estate and heads out to enjoy life, we see one who at first appears to have great freedom and independence. He has lots of money, lots of friends, lots of fun. It's like every day was a new adventure. He felt in control, safe and secure, but things turn sour and suddenly life is miserable. He has broken his connection with a real source of strength and, and stability in his life with his father and his family. Of course, in this parable, God is that source of strength and stability represented by this kind and generous father. Sadly, it doesn't take much to see how this pattern is repeated many times in our culture today. There are countless examples of people who try to enjoy life to the fullest, busy with making money, sports, fun, and entertainment, and not having time to stay connected to their real source of strength and stability. They have built their own golden calf, which they worship, sacrificing all their time and energy to it. Is God going to be forgiving? Of course. That's what our readings emphasize so clearly today. But this doesn't mean that we can just go on living a life of dissipation, of ignoring the com commandments and invitation to give true honor to God. God is ready to forgive and forget everything with one objective in mind, to allow us to change. In the second reading, we hear once again, Paul was forgiven in order that he could change and become that new person, that apostle to the world. God's forgiveness and our efforts to live in his grace and love are connected. In our efforts to change, sometimes we fail many times, but God is patient and will not give up on us, and we cannot give up on ourselves. We will enjoy true security and independence only by recognizing our dependence on God. Today's parable, finally, it ends with our focus on the elder son. He's angry. The father reminds him that everything he has is his to enjoy. The father invites the son to come back and join the feast, and then the gospel just kind of ends there. We're sort of like left hanging. We don't know what happens. And so that, um, I think, also speaks to us, that, that God created us in freedom so we can continue to pursue just the enticements and, tra and attractions and security of the world, or we can be open to that deeper relationship with God, the, the, the one, the source of, of this extravagant love and forgiveness and, and our hope of um, eternal life and joy. So how will we respond? We profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. 
he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are especially attentive to those in need, so with confidence in the Lord's love and mercy, we offer our needs and our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Bishop Thomas, and all church leaders, may God guide them in holiness as they lead the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations, that they may seek to end all war and conflicts among people and nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may we be a model of mercy and forgiveness for all sinners, providing witness to God's love for sinners who repent. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people who are caught up in the enticements and attractions of the world, especially when these draw them away from God. May they come to their senses and embrace what is right and good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are estranged from their family or suffer from difficult family relationships, may all be quick to extend forgiveness and grow in love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who perished in the attacks of September 11, 2001, for those who continue to suffer from those events and any who suffer from acts of violence, may they find comfort in the care of loved ones and in the loving embrace of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For grandparents here and around the world, may they know the love and appreciation of their children and grandchildren. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the living and deceased members of the parish, may all the faithful departed know the rejoicing of Jesus and all the angels in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers written in the parish book of intentions in our personal prayers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, grant us the grace to trust that you will never give up on us, no matter how much we turn away from you. Hear us in your mercy and grant the prayers that we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn, number 584. Hosea, come back to me, number 584. <clears throat>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life, and by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 554, Gift of Finest Wheat, number 554.
Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Just a couple announcements. First of all, good luck to all those at the fair. I know it's a um, fair week and probably some are there showing pigs right now or, or soon. So good luck to, to all, all at the fair. A couple other um, events or things, opportunities coming up. Um, tomorrow on Monday, the Rosary Altar Society at Hicksville at St. Michael's um, has invited, it's a Kevin Jory, um, uh, I think that's the right name, um, who, who's like from the diocese, the director of life and justice office, will be there to make a presentation. That's at 7 o'clock in the evening at, at, at St. Michael in Hicksville. All are welcome. It's not just for, for women, part of the Ultra Rosary Society, but, but anybody, public, anybody's open to that. So 7 o'clock on Monday at St. Michael's. Also, um, this coming Saturday there at St. Michael's, they have, um, it's, um, maybe you've seen it advertised, the treasure in their trunk. So different vendors, people have been invited to come in the parking lot there. They'll set up with their, either their trunk out of their car or tables or just have a variety of things that people sell and trade. So food or crafts or collectibles or, you know, so that will be this coming Saturday. So also an opportunity to um, go there and, and look around and see what treasures you can find. And then also for here, a reminder that in two weeks we have our, our, our famous chicken dinner festival. So um, a reminder that raffle tickets are, are still available and also the worker um, schedule or, or list. Please um, take those and, and, and plan to attend. Look, look forward to just the, the, the fun and, and good food and all, all of that, that that is part of the chicken dinner here. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Holy Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power thrust into hell, Satan and all the other evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join in our closing hymn, number 581, There is a Wideness in God's Mercy, number 581.